So the schedule reveal is tonight, and we know a lot of the dates for Alabama already, but there's some key ones missing, and where would we like for them to be? Because I think it's going to make a big difference. You are Locked On Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody. Welcome back into Locked On Bama. Luke Robinson, that's me, Jimmy Stein, that's him. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. I'll talk about FanDuel in a minute, but also thank you for making this your first listen every single time. We're up to almost 8,100 subscribers now. I mean, it's really growing and growing and growing. Man, you guys are the best. We really appreciate you. This is so much fun for us, so we hope it's fun for you. Um, Jimmy, I think I talked about the schedule in the cold open, and that's probably what I should start with. Uh, even though I've got it backwards on the on today's show list over there to the right. But, you know, the schedule revealed that this is so intriguing to me. There's some people like, hey, we're playing for a national championship coming up. Why aren't, there's recruiting going on. Why aren't y'all talking about that? First of all, the, the practice yeah. for Michigan doesn't start till Saturday. So we will be talking about that a ton. But the schedule revealed tonight is super cool for a lot of reasons. This may be the last time that the SEC is an eight-game schedule. It might be. I don't know that it is. And in fact, I'm kind of leaning that I hope it's not. Um, I was pro nine game for a minute, but now I've kind of swapped back uh, because I like playing some non-con games that are bigger. So I I sort of hope it isn't. And the schedule is already tough enough. But I'm going to put up a picture of the, the schedule that we know so far about Alabama. And it sort of blocks Jimmy out and keeps me on there for some reason. I didn't do that on purpose. Um, <laughs> I don't. I don't, if, I don't mind. It's early. I don't know if you guys here, can I'm see. I'm in my it. jogging up in my jogging outfit. But you know, um, so September 14th, obviously, we go to Wisconsin, and then September 28th, we welcome in Georgia. The games we don't know about are Missouri at home, South Carolina at home, and at Vanderbilt. Now. So my my question to you is, Jimmy, what game do you want between Wisconsin and Georgia? And I'm leaning, I would like that to be at Vanderbilt. Let me give you my reasoning. That if that game is at Vanderbilt, so we go to, to Wisconsin and then go to Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt's going to be an easy win. We know that. I'm not trying to cut on Vanderbilt, but they, they, they've lost about everybody in the transfer portal and they weren't good to begin with. So if you have two away games and then you come home and play Georgia, I think that's going to be just the most raucous environment it could possibly be. And that's, I don't want to play Missouri or South Carolina because Missouri, Missouri definitely, but South Carolina, even so they're dangerous enough to where you can overlook them and maybe get caught with your pants down a little bit. But at Vanderbilt, I think we could sleepwalk and still win and really put a lot of effort into to Georgia the next week. So that's what I'm hoping is there, that our first SEC game is at Vanderbilt. Normally I wouldn't be for that, but in this particular instance I am. What do you think? Hmm. <clears throat> Keep in mind that uh, two two things that aren't listed on that schedule, and, and there's two, are bye weeks. Yes. So there's not only the three games that we don't know when they will be, there's also two bye weeks that we don't know exactly when they will be. My answer in terms of what I would want the week before Georgia is one of the buys. (laughs) In a week before LSU, I want the other buy, as is a traditional spot. uh, Let me stop you. Let me stop you for a second. And I I, I don't mean to cut you off. Um, But the reason I don't want – that's so early for a buy. And I feel like if we could get at Vandy on the road under our belt, get an SEC win under our belt, and then come home to Georgia after two weeks on the road, assuming we're undefeated. I mean, Wisconsin, it's not going to be easy, but let's face it, they're, they're not they're not the Wisconsin of even 10 years ago. So we should be undefeated. I'm assuming Georgia will be, even though they have some tough games. They got Clemson and Atlanta, whatever. So that that's – I'm trying to sell you on my idea. Is what yeah, I'm no, I, I, I like it. I mean, I do like it. If it's not the bye week, then I obviously hope it's Vanderbilt. For all the talk about how next year's schedule is tough, and it really, really is. I'm not saying that it's not. I think it's probably the toughest schedule Alabama ever played. There is a couple of breaks, and one of them is that there will be two buys. uh, That's that's not a normal part of the schedule. And secondly, as we've talked about before on the show, Luke, uh, whenever you play at Vanderbilt, that is the SEC scheduling plum. That's 
the best thing that can happen to you in an SEC schedule is Vanderbilt on the road, not Vanderbilt at home. That that's that's not helpful uh, because be, you get Vanderbilt on the road. Now you've got an SEC road win, and now that's one less SEC game that you're playing on the road that's sort of lose, losable. And I hate being that over the top kind of rude to Vanderbilt because. I do uh, respect what they do, but let's be honest about how big of a favorite Alabama will be in that game. Alabama will be probably a 30 point favorite uh, even on the road against uh, against Vanderbilt. So I'm with you. I, I think you're exactly right in terms of, hey, if I got to pick one of those games to play before Georgia at that part of the schedule, I would definitely pick Vanderbilt. You get your first win. You knock out an SEC road game. Uh so I, I say at Vandy, and then I'm curious as to where the buys will be. I bet a buy is one week before LSU. Uh, I, I don't know where the other buy will be uh, uh, because it's it's kind of kind of new. We only do this, I think, like roughly once every seven years when Saturday uh, before Labor Day is actually August 31st. When 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 you get that situation, then you get two bye weeks. Yeah, okay, so – and I'm having to squint here and move up close to the screen because I'm like, y'all, I probably can't see this as well as I want to. Actually, I can probably make this big. Yeah, now it's better for me. Okay, so um, if, we, if we do what I want, put Vandy at September 21, and then you have Georgia at home, and then, Jimmy, that's when I would want one of the bye weeks right after Georgia. Or, or you play South Carolina right after Georgia – and then have a bye, By way, and then Tennessee. Missouri at home, you know, something like that. I definitely want one of the buys before uh, LSU. I'm with you on that. But, again, I, I don't want – Looks like the bye weeks will be pretty close, right? I mean, if it's not yeah. the 20, if it's not September 21st, you're yeah. having the buys really both, both of them in October for the most part, both of them, you know, and, hey, that's – the later they are in the season, the better off you are. I mean, everybody's got the bumps and bruises late. And let's remember, me and Luke are going to drive y'all nuts with this. I know I am. You got to have depth next year. We, you always have to have depth. Depth is just vital in a longer playoff. Those bye weeks need to be as late in the season as possible. <laughs> and you just need to play more players uh, in September than you normally play. And as far as that eight, nine game schedule, Luke made a good point about that. My mind has changed, not changed, but my mind has hardened in, in through this playoff experience. I, I want to stay at eight. I do. And uh, I, I'm going to be an extremist because that's how bad I want to make the playoff. I want to stay at eight and I want to play one FCS team and three group of five teams at home. That, that's what I want to do because I want to make the playoff. And, and the committee has shown us they do not care about schedule strength. They, they, it's, it's a non-factor to them. They put in the team, Luke, that played the worst schedule in the entire sport in Liberty. Uh, they, when asked, why did you pick Alabama over Florida State? They said Florida State's quarterback was hurt. They didn't say Alabama played the number five schedule and Florida State played the number 55 schedule. And they could have alleviated a lot of this controversy if they had said, <laughs> look at the schedules. That's, that's the schedule. what they could have yeah. done. Um, yeah, but, but they didn't. They did. So, they, they, they've done the opposite of that. As a matter of fact, Luke, look, it's crazy. Pull up the top 25 playoff rankings, and with, like, one exception, it's all the undefeated teams, then all the one-loss teams, then all the two-loss teams, then all the three-loss teams. It's all they paid attention to is the number in the loss column. That's all they care about. And, and that's great. I'm not complaining. I'm glad they made it clear. Hey, it's clear. They don't care who you play. Just win your games. And, and that's why Florida State strength of schedule isn't ever discussed. It should be the number one thing that's discussed. Instead, it's Florida State lost their quarterback. There's one more reason not to play a tough schedule. And, and again, the great irony is that Alabama's about to go to two Power Five schools on their schedule in a rotating basis after 2024 for for the foreseeable future. Yeah, <laughs> that's the yeah. irony. So we might want to think about changing some of that, especially if we go to nine SEC games. I would. Me- I would. I, I think Greg Byrne should do it. Soon and, and should make a th- and should make a big statement about it by saying we want to play these games, but we more more than we want to play these games, we would like to be in the playoff. And, and the committee has been crystal clear about the strength of schedules a non-factor. So we're following the committee here because we'd like to be in the playoff. 
when we come back, we're going to start talking about the early enrollees coming on because those guys get lost in the shuffle because we're still talking about the Ryan Williamses and the, um, the, you know, some of the other guys that were out there looking, you know, Jordan Seaton, who I know is committed to Colorado, but I mean, he's still out low. But anyway, um, I want to tell everybody about FanDuel. As the weather gets colder, and it is getting colder right now, the NFL offers stay hot right now on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get 150 dollars in bonus bets with any winning five dollar money line bet that's 150 bucks if your team wins if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel there's no better time than right now right now look at look at your watch if I had a watch that's what I'm pointing at uh there's just no better time the app is so easy to use there's a wide range of betting options including spreads and player props over unders and much much more so visit fanduel.com slash locked on and get into the nfl season like the rest of us already have fanduel is an official partner of the nfl before we talk about these early enrollees again i keep teasing you with something that i said we we're going to lead off with uh but <laughs> before uh before we get into um before we get into to this early enrollee talk, which is going to be a lot of fun, I do want to mention that uh, Mario Craver, a guy, uh, a wide receiver for Clay Chalkwell that I really like, uh, I like him a lot. Um, he has committed to Mississippi State, and um, I think that's a huge pickup for them. But, you know, it, start, it sparked a discussion last night on uh, on my show, Sports Blitz Live, that I do on Tuesdays with my co-host that, Mississippi State is just I – mean, we were talking about new coaching hires and Jeff Levy going to Mississippi State, and I said, I, God bless Mississippi State. I, I don't know how they're going to survive. I looked at their schedule. I, they got, I think, four wins probably max. I mean, you might be able to get to five. But their – how are they going to compete in this league? I mean, it's going to be practically impossible. Um, I just it, – it's – I feel sorry for them in a way because we have added – they have been knocked down two pegs by Oklahoma and Texas – and um, they, they've also had all these coaching changes and they've had everything else. They're, they're you know, they got all the best quarterback they've ever had in the transfer portal, or at least one of them. Uh, they've got uh, Nathaniel Watson leaving, the guy from Maplesville, who was one of the best players in the SEC this year. Um, I just, wow. And they're at Arizona State to top it off next year. Um, and Arizona State's doing pretty Is well. It Arizona or Arizona State? Arizona State next year. Oh, wow. Okay. I looked it up. Yeah. Um, um, Cause they played at Arizona, I think a couple years ago, but yeah. Okay. So, okay. So I just brought it up because Craver committed there. And yeah. I was also making the point that, you know, this year with wide receivers and, and a lot of them are going to Auburn, no problem saying that. But you think about now in this class, Ryan Williams, Cam Coleman, Perry Thompson, Bryce Kane, Malcolm Simmons, and Mario Craver. And, I would say in most years, Mario Craver would be either the second or third best wide receiver. I think he's clearly the fifth or sixth best wide receiver. And that's not a knock on him. It's just an awesome year for wide receivers in the state. But I just wanted to throw that out there because, I mean, it's just – it'd be hard to be a Mississippi State fan right now and look and see what's what's coming down the pike. I mean, it's it's tough. What I like about Craver to Mississippi State is I think it signals to everyone, and this will be fun for me because I, I love how college football is full of different offenses and not everybody looks the same like they do on Sundays where everyone's running the same offense and the same defense pretty much. Uh, but in college, it can be radically different. Uh, Mississippi State sign of Mario Craver to me means uh, the air raid's back. I mean, it won't be Mike Leach's air raid, but uh, Mississippi State is going to spread the field with multiple receivers who can all run and they don't care if some of them are five foot seven, they want speed and they want multiple receivers. And that'll be a fun offense to watch. I, I don't think it's going to look like a leech. I think it's going to look like Baylor. Uh, Jeff Lebby uh, famously, he was on the Baylor staff. He's married to Art Briles daughter. Uh, it's going to look like Baylor's Art Briles and, and, and which is fun. It's fun and good for Mississippi state. I agree that their schedule uh, next year looks like a bear. Uh, one break you could say, though, they're getting is, uh, hey, they've been stuck since 1992 playing nothing but SEC West teams. Now, I mean, now they don't. Now Alabama, not not an every-year opponent, maybe. not Now uh, LSU, not an every-year opponent. Um, you know, maybe they're replaced by some East teams, like Mississippi State could be like, we've heard of Vanderbilt. We've just they, never been. They do not get never, Vanderbilt. <laughs> they don't the next year. They don't that's, next year. But I'm that's saying a shame. They, 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 they were playing Vanderbilt under the old schedule. They were playing Vanderbilt, what, once every 12 years. Now they, they could get Vandy once every four years. And, you know, and gosh, boy, this has been my Jimmy's picking on Vandy show. Um, all right. So let's talk about these early enrollees because, you know, when we're talking, it's not, as Jerry Seinfeld has said, and I've mentioned on the show a million times, 
men aren't interested in what's on TV. We're interested in what else is on TV. So we're not interested in what we have. We're interested in what we're going to get. And you look at some of these uh, early in, early enrollees coming in. And, um, you know, Julian Sayed will be here earlier. That's you, can, you can't say enough good things about that because who knows what's going to happen in the transfer portal after the bowl games, right? I mean, I'm not I, – I, You've heard rumors, but I'll tell you something. I've heard more and more Ty Simpson is going to hang around than he's going to leave. A lot of people assume he's leaving. I would not assume that anymore. Uh, Caleb Odom is coming in. I absolutely love that. Uh, Casey Poe, William Sanders, uh, Joe Ionata. Is that how we say that, Ionata? I've been saying Ionata, and he has yet to uh, to DM me and go, quit butchering my name. That's positive. Uh, yeah. Jeremiah Beeman is coming in, which, I mean, shoot. I know he locked down his, you know, he said he's a thousand percent committed yeah. after the same his last visit or whatever, but he was flirting with Auburn at least. So it's good to know he will be enrolling early. Uh, I say a funga. Isn't that how we say that? Isaiah funga. Isaiah funga. Is, Isaiah funga. And, and the boy, uh, isn't that, and, that's a tough guess looking at that name, and, but uh, hey, I love it. It says guess. here on on three and you're with on three. He arrives December 20th. How, how does that work? Why is he the only one arriving? Well, Red Morgan is also arriving December 20th. It's just odd that the two Phoenix City guys are arriving, arriving December 20th. Uh, I'm going to guess that's the uh, – I think the rule – the the rule. I mean, there's very few <laughs> – I think the rule that applies here is they must be graduated from high school. Graduated. Maybe that's a – I find it coincidental that both the kids from Central Phoenix City will be here December 20th and not yeah. – Saturday. So I'm guessing that's a central Phoenix city graduation date. Maybe. Okay. Uh, okay. But I'm okay. guessing. Um, then uh, Sterling Dixon will be in now. How is he injury wise, Jimmy? I mean, is, is he, I've heard a couple of different stories. You know, he played, yeah. he played uh, through his shoulder injury at Spanish Fort and played outstanding. I've also heard don't nobody write this down like it's fact. I've heard that he needs surgery, mm. and once he has surgery, he's gonna be out about four months. Uh, mm. it seems to me like the moment the season is over, the moment he's leaving Spanish Ford, it's a good time to do that. Maybe, maybe it's this hey, come up here, go through the bull practices, learn the stuff, learn it, and then uh, let's get the surgery in January. You'll miss the spring, but hey, you're a freshman, and and, and that'll be fine. If he were to, okay, but here's the thing. If he were to do it like right after the Spanish Fort season versus come to Alabama and do it, wouldn't it be more on Alabama's dime if he were to come up here and do it? Is Am I reading that wrong maybe? No, no, that's a, that's a great point. I think Alabama would want to do it to where it is on Alabama's dime because Alabama can then – it's Alabama's people and it's Alabama's rehab and everything is kind of done by Alabama – but because they have a tremendous amount of confidence in their medical team. So I'm sure they would rather Sterling uh, be under the complete supervision of Alabama physicians as opposed to, hey, go to your own doctor or do your own thing. You know, uh, you know, y'all y'all do that on your own Blue Cross Blue Shield down there in, in Mobile. And, and I, so, so, no, that is a great point. I'm, I'm sure Alabama would rather be 100 percent, you know, running that process. All right. When we come back, we're going to talk some more about the early enrollees and also the fact that I don't think we talked yesterday about Ryan Williams uh, being included on the Alabama-Mississippi All-Star game because that sort of came through late. And yeah. uh, that's an interesting development. We'll talk about that, too, when we come back. But right now, when you're hiring for your small business, you want to have as many top-tier candidates as possible to interview. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. It really, really is. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. Thankfully, with LinkedIn, the process is intuitive, quick, and easy. They even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even easier than what I just mentioned before. Before, and that was easy. So post your job for free at LinkedIn.com. Uh, as I'm getting a phone call and I'm going to cut it off. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on coast. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. And that's that. 
So yeah, let's let's talk a little bit more about these early enrollees. Um, yeah. On the on the defensive backs, uh, Jalen and Bakwe. They're, 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 they're all here. They're all coming. Here. That, that's all awesome. six. All six, and, right? Yeah, and we're going to need them because I just saw Terry on Arnold going ahead of Kool-Aid McKinstry in the first round in a mock draft yesterday. So yeah, yeah I mean Terry on Arnold, we got to assume he's leaving. By the way, I may get to see Terry on Arnold and Jalen Milrow today at a Christmas thing. And if I do, I'm getting some pictures and posting them because I'm going to brag, just letting you know. Um, <laughs> but so, yeah, and then Malachi Moore, we don't know about him yet. I mean, we, we're going to be losing some dudes. So cool that you're invited to the Bryant Hall Christmas party. <laughs> well, they, they love them some locked on Bama. <laughs> uh, Jalen Mbakwe, Zabian Brown, Peyton Woodyard, Jameer Grimsley, Red Morgan. Uh, by the way, I'm really beginning to dig Red Morgan. I'm beginning to like him more and more. The more I watch some film on him, the more I just hear about him. I'm liking this dude a lot. And Dre Kirkpatrick Jr. I like, uh, all, no, I like Dre. I mean, yeah. I, I, I'm one of the few. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Dre Kirkpatrick flag waver. And oh. I, I think between Red and Dre, I'll be stunned if one of them isn't really good. One of the two. I, I, and I, I'm just saying, well, odds are, in my mind, one of those two are going to be really good. And, of course, Peyton Woodyard. Uh, the other safety is the more highly rated of the three and, and thus more likely uh, to be good than both of them because, you know, the ratings, you know, uh, have proven themselves over time uh, and, and the ratings are a good way to, to form your bets. But, uh, no, I do like Red a lot. But, man, I'm, I'm a big Dre fan. I think fans make way too many assumptions about three stars versus four stars versus five stars and instead of, of truly – understanding how rankings work and how these kids are ranked. And uh, Dre is a late bloomer. That is a fact. He is a vastly different player as a senior than he was as a junior. And that is going to reflect in the rankings negatively. Yep. Uh, there's no doubt about it. And um, the one thing that's weird about all these, uh, the, the, the early enrollees, <laughs> there's one grouping that has nobody early enrolling, and that's wide receiver. Yeah, and that, and that little weird. Well, Ryan is still <coughs> finishing high school, assuming he follows through with his commitment sign, still finishing high school. Rico Scott's school does not allow early graduates, and neither does Amari Jefferson. You, you find it more often. Here's what's kind of weird. Private schools have, like, better academic reputations than public schools, Right. Well, private schools are less likely to allow early graduation, even though the kids might be more academically able or inclined to do so. But a lot of private schools just don't allow it. Another kid that's not early enrolling is Jay Lindsay. Uh, again, private school, Patrician Academy. Uh, and, and of course, Amari Jefferson is at the Baylor School. And uh, here I'm stealing my joke from my good uh, buddy on the radio, Randy Kennedy in Mobile. He always points out that uh, if you go to a school and it starts with the, it's a really good school. Yeah, and that, that's a good point. I mean, if it's if it's like the something, oof, that's I like, like that. the the bowl school. Yeah, you know that's that's the, actually boy. It's been a while since I've heard about the bowl school. <laughs> the bowl school. Um, but okay, so let's also talk about Ryan Williams, uh, the reclassification. He's taken Kevin Riley's place. Uh, for the Alabama Mississippi All Star Game, they'll also have Perry Thompson there. Um, I'm still. I'm going to tell you something, Jimmy. I've exhausted every resource trying to find out if there's any smoke at all between Alabama and Perry Thompson. I'm going to assume there's not, but it is pretty hush hush. I don't know if that's good or bad. Um, you have any thoughts, real quickly, on that? I uh, just uh, at Bol, we've reported that there has always been ongoing contact between Perry Thompson and the Alabama staff. There's always been there. There's never been a "Don't call me anymore. We're done." That's that's boy girl stuff. That's yeah. not that's not recruiting stuff. But uh, uh, I, I think the uh, communication has continued. Uh, does that mean that we are projecting a flip to Alabama? No, not not as of now. Okay. Got you. And boy, we're running out of time, aren't we? Next, uh, he he's signing next Wednesday, uh, so uh, time is getting short. And I yeah. would project he's signing with Auburn, and I think Ryan Williams will sign with Alabama, just not next Wednesday. Um, so Ryan Williams, uh, 
reclassified and going to be at this. This is great news. I think this is great for everybody. If you haven't seen Ryan Williams play, I want to tell you something. Um, I know uh, Gagliano, who is the quarterback for Opelika, I know he's going to be one of the quarterbacks. I can't remember who the other quarterback is for the Alabama roster. But when you can throw to Bryce Kane, Malcolm Simmons, who I've seen a lot here at Benjamin Russell, he's he's really good player. Mal- Malcolm Simmons is really, really good. I mean, no, he's not Ryan Williams. I don't think he's Perry Thompson or Cam Coleman, but he's really, really good. I mean, he he's very good. Bryce Kane, very good. I think he's got a ton of potential. You're going to be throwing to some really fabulous wide receivers. Um, yeah, Alabama, who was the other quarterback? We need to look, we need to know that. Well, off the top I'm of my head, I can't remember. Uh, I'm, off the, I'm off trying the top to look of my head. I, I can't. I tell you, it needs to be. I bet it, it's not, and it should be. <clears> if Jimmy was in charge of all things, like 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 every one of us listening to the show wishes he was, uh, I, I think it should be Josh Flowers from Mobile. Who I, I'm again, uh, I, I wave the flag for that kid who's uh, weirdly uncommitted right now. Uh, I, I'm a huge Josh Flowers fan. I have talked to several people in the recruiting industry who aren't as high on him as I am. I, I think I, I think I'm the one guy. Me and Josh's mom. I mean, we're we're <laughs> like this guy is crazy good. Me and Josh's mom, and we're the only one. And, uh, uh, but I mean, it's raw. I think it's going to take a hot minute. But I, I I would like him. If you told me tomorrow he committed to Southern Cal, I'd go ooh, good move, Southern Cal. Okay. Uh- uh, now this roster may be, need to be updated, but it says it's Jared Hollins who's committed to yeah. South oh. Alabama from Mary. Oh, I, know, He's good. Oh, I literally know him. Uh, yeah, yeah, great, great uh, prospect. In my opinion, the best quarterbacks ever signed with South Alabama, and, and well, I know he doesn't have a ranking to back that up, but that that kid can play. There's a kid named Caleb McCrary from Montgomery yep. Catholic that I I, he's committed to Troy. He's small. But I think he would have been an interesting pick too. Um, I like him. But uh, yeah, this, I know that kid. The the uh, the the Mary Montgomery kid though. Here's what's interesting about him and Gagliano. Mm-hmm. They're both around six three, six four, around two hundred pounds. So I think that's better for this particular group of receivers. You just want a big guy who can see over the line and say, you know, throw ball, go get ball. I mean, you got frisbee catching dogs out there. Let them go get it, and. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm super excited about this. I'll tell you something though. Um, I kind of wish Jalen Mbakwe is going to be playing. I wonder if they put him at quarterback at all. Uh, maybe for some uh, Wildcat stuff, that'd be great. Because good luck tackling him. Uh, God knows Sarah Land uh, struggled with that, and Sarah Land's a team full of beasts, and then they couldn't even get Mbakwe to the ground most often. You know, I showed Jared Holland's film on our board at BOL months ago. His junior tape. I showed his film on that board and didn't tell people much about him. And the few people that comment on it all thought he was a power five, like, well, what power five schools he signed him with. Yeah, I got you. Well, that's something we'll talk about some more, you know, maybe have a, a show after the uh, the Alabama Mississippi All-Star game on Saturday. But until then, we're in, actually until tomorrow, everybody, roll tide. Roll tide.